As most of you are well aware, our school is part of a large family of Loretto schools around the world. Every year we celebrate Mary Ward and the founding vision of our school. During 2021 and 2022, we are also celebrating a remarkable woman, Theresa Ball, a significant figure in the Loretto story, not only in Ireland, but throughout the whole Loretto community. We are celebrating her today with this presentation and you will continue to learn more about her during the coming months. So before we move forward, we're going to look back, back to the start of the pandemic. We take a few moments to pause and remember in prayer all those whose lives have been affected by COVID. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering and bereaved. We gather together in our class groups, united as a school community, to pray for God's mercy and healing. We pray for all those who give so much to our community, including essential workers and healthcare workers. We pray for the gifts of health and strength for all of us and the courage to continue the work of building a just world. Amen. A reminder, as you know, our mass mark marking the start of the school year has been uploaded to the school website. We should encourage you to watch it if you haven't already. May it be a time for reflection and give you space to look forward to the year ahead. Teresa Ball. Throughout this year, we will mark 200 years of Loretto education in Ireland. Mary Ward created the Loretto Order, but it was Teresa Ball who ensured that generations of students in Ireland have had the privilege of learning in a Loretto school. She has been described as the young girl from Dublin who followed her heart and made a difference. We are asking you to do as Teresa Ball would have wanted and go set the world on fire with love. You can do this by fighting for a more just world. The focus of our theme for this year. Theme for the year, the Mary Ward value of justice. The theme for this year is building a just world locally, nationally and globally. It is aimed at making us feel more connected to our local, national and global community. We live in an unjust world. Today, we are going to learn about some of the people who face injustice every day. Together, we can make the world a better place. Building a just world. Building a just world, we join with so many other voices, both young and old, in promoting the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. These include quality education for all, climate justice and reducing poverty, issues that are close to our hearts in Loretto Bray. South Sudan. Answering a call to help educate young women in South Sudan, the Loretto Order established Loretto Rumbek School in 2008. Sister Orla, a past pupil of our school, has been a central figure in establishing and developing the school. To understand why it was so important to set up this school, we will first look at the context in which the school opened. Civil War. A long war between the government and southern rebels began in 1983 and ended with the breakup of Sudan in 2011. In that year, the southern part of the country became an independent state called South Sudan. Civil wars have, been, have hindered development in Sudan for more than 30 years. Sudan has a majority of Muslim Arabic people, most of whom live in the north of the country. It also has many black Christians who live mainly in the south and in the western region of Darfur. For many years, there have been tensions between those, those two groups. Severe drought forced Arabic herders to migrate southwards in search of grazing for their cattle. Competition for land and water caused conflict between these herders and southern farmers. Recent research demonstrates that in war-torn South Sudan, conflict frequently occurs after flood or drought. Analysis shows that one single flood event can be associated with about nine conflict incidents in South Sudan. The population are heavily reliant on land for agriculture. Flooding and droughts threaten livelihoods, enhance fear and cause an increase in violence. The actions of developed countries have resulted in greater climate change and suffering in developing countries. South Sudanese Civil War 2013 to 2018. Increasing intercommunal violence and attacks, the threat of the peace process unraveling, and the dire humanitarian conditions of South Sudan are a continuing concern. The upcoming elections in 2022 are a worry for Sudanese citizens as they don't know if peace will remain. War, war hinders development. War results in government funding being spent on arms instead of education, healthcare, housing, and infrastructure. Inequalities are enhanced and injustices further entrenched. 
A UN report found that more than $73 million has been diverted from South Sudan's public accounts and resources since 2018. This indicates corruption and increased arms spending. COVID-19 in South Sudan. More than 7 million people are currently facing food insecurity and access to healthcare is very limited. 12,453 cases of COVID-19 have been reported, but it is likely that this figure is much higher. There are very limited testing facilities and social stigma around the virus. This obscures the true magnitude of the pandemic. Only 0.5% of the country's population has been vaccinated. This is due to a number of reasons, the main being a lack of supply. Many pharmaceutical companies in developed countries have patented their vaccines, meaning they can only they can create them. This has resulted in developing countries having limited access, creating what's known as vaccine inequity. Based education is a right denied to many. Young girls, and especially young women, are less likely to enroll and more likely to drop out. Despite these challenges, they are the backbone of society. They cook, clean, care for younger children, get water, do the laundry, take care of family gardens, and collect the firewood. In 2017, South Sudan was ranked as the world's most difficult nation for girls to receive an education in. Only 37% of girls will enroll in an educational programme in South Sudan. Just 2% of girls will go on to enroll in secondary school. And 52% of girls are married before the age of 18. The Loretto Order recognised injustice, saw the need and decided to do something about it. The very existence of Loretto Rombeck demonstrates a fight for justice and equality. The Loretto Difference. Loretto Rombeck has both a primary school and a secondary school. Students who attend the schools receive support through meals, access to water, healthcare, security, and social programs to engage them and the community so that they can receive a high quality and relevant education. The school's dropout rate has remained under 5% since 2014 which is a really good statistic. 62% of students are enrolled in or attending or graduate have graduated from third level education. And more than 50% of Loretta Rombeck's teaching staff are female. We've explored a small proportion of the injustice in Sudan. There are many others there in other countries. Throughout this academic year, you will be given multiple opportunities to build a more just world, locally, nationally and globally. In truth, Teresa Ball's story never ends, as her spirit continues in all Loretto throughout the world. So go set the world on fire with love.